Well, next we're going to talk more about plugins and the use of plugins within our track. So first thing, I'll play this track a little bit. Let's go back to Pro Tools. Okay, we got our drum there. Got some reverb on it. I think what I'm going to do first is I want to mute this reverb. I'm going to get this drum really clean. Okay, good. So close this off first. And you can see now it's muted in the send. It's turned to a blue color right there, as you can see. So that means that that particular send is muted. I'll go back to my insert. I'm going to use a plug in here. I'm going to go to an EQ, a three band, excuse me, a four band plug in. Of course, it's a mono plug in, it's a mono track. Now, here it loads up. As you can see, they're very flat EQ setting. Now, what I want to do is I want to pick the kind of EQ I want to use for my snare drum. I'm going to go here to, uh, let's see, we're going to go to um, snare here, right here. See this? There's a lot of folders here. These folders are pretty good. We got guitar, um, acoustic. Guitar, acoustic piano, bass, some DJ EQs, some drum overhead EQs for drum mics. We have electric guitar, electric piano, hi hat, kick drum, of course, snare. I'm going to still use crisp snare. Now, once I load this preset in, you'll notice that it's got its own settings set up. These are factory made settings, settings made at Pro Tools, usually designed to feature the best characteristics of this particular plugin, this EQ for band, EQ here. Now, I'll play it back. There's a bypass button here as well. I'll select this. I get a difference between using the EQ and not using the EQ. Now that's even better if I press solo here and then try it. That's without it, is with it. So you can see what happens here. It raised the high mid frequency. And it raised it to about uh, at four, mm, four kilohertz, four point five kilohertz, and it raised only 0.30 Q. See that's so it's a pretty wide Q there. Now, if you like it, you can keep it. But for me, these are just settings from the factory. I want to make it adjust for what I'm using. I want to use it for. I may want to change this here a little bit here at my mid frequency, get a little bit more of the mids out, and play it back. Now you see, once I did that, the compare button lit up. I can compare the difference between this setting and the original preset setting. I'll press the space bar to play it back. Now I'll press my compare button. That's the original preset. Here's my change. You hear the difference. So you also want to compare what's going on with your presets. Now if you like it, you can keep it. In my case, I'm going to go back here and I may say I'm going to try this other one. This looks better for me because you actually lowered the gain using the same Q and the same frequency, which is the 4.5 kilohertz. And here, I'll play it back. I'll bypass it. Now, whenever I use a plug-in, I don't want to use it solo. I want to use it with the track itself. I'm going to go back in, of course, and unsolo it. Now, that doesn't sound too bad. I want to now reapply the reverb. I'll unmute the reverb at the send. Remember, this is post fader. Not bad, I like that. That's pretty good right there. So once I get the combination working well, particularly using a kick, snare, and hi-hat, I want to compare this plug-in setting with the sounds that it's going to work with in this particular song. So once I got a setting I like, I think it's pretty good, and I want to change it a little bit. Now here in this case, I want to change it a little bit and move it over a little bit my frequency. And the gain is not bad. I'm going to change the Q a little bit, though. I want to keep the Q wide, but just bring it down to maybe about here, 0.41. Play it back, compare, I like that one better. So if I want to keep it, what I can do here, roll some bottom off here, play it back again, like that. If I want to keep it, I can go back to here, go to preset, and here in preset I can save as. So I can save this as a new preset, I can say, okay, look. I like it, but I want to save it as, so I can go to here, so that I can copy the settings. 
and use it again someplace. Like I did before when I used these, I copied the settings and I applied the settings to the region in my edit window. That way I saved DSP power. And I can go back here also. I can delete the current setting. I can lock that setting in or I can make it the default setting. That means whenever this plugin comes up, it's the default. That means whenever it comes up, this setting will come up each time. It's a great way to have one setting for a particular um, plugin that you want to use constantly. So you say, I want to use this plugin again. You pull it up, this setting will come up as its main setting for that plugin. Now I can save these settings. I can save as. And here, I can set the folder to save it into. Here it's going to save it to my EQ folder. It's Chris Bear. I can call it 2A. I'll press save. And now it's saved. If I want to go back and find it again, see it's right there. Right there, right there in front of me. This is kind of cool. I can go back to there, pull it up, and it comes right up. Now let's say if we want to get rid of that, we don't like it. Well, we can delete it. Go to our preset, and we can delete current setting file. It says, delete the current setting. It's not undoable. Delete, and it's gone. I go back here, it's gone. It's still here in front of me. I can save it again, but it's gone. I can, I can save it again, actually. Watch, I'll go back to here and save it. I'll call it um, Docs Snare. And I'll look for it. That's right there. See that? Now you can also go back into the folder and get rid of it. Now I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go back to my finder, back to the hard drive. We'll select library, application support, and then we're going to go to DigiDesign. We'll go right here to our plugin setting, and we're going to look for EQ, EQ3. And there it is, Doc Snare. I can go to here, I can delete it. Trash, yep, throw it out. Continue. Put it right in the trash. Makes it easier. Makes it much easier. Close back to here. And I can delete the trash so I'm going to the finder. Since it's like that, we can't do that. So I'll just go back here, take it out. And we've gotten rid of that plugin. Go back to my finder now. Says here cannot complete because the Chris is locked. So once this is locked, you can't get rid of it. Understand that. So once the plugin is locked, you can't get rid of it. You gotta make sure that you actually unlock the plugin before you throw it out. That's important to know. Now, I prefer to actually do this. I'll go to my plugin first. I'll use my four band. I'll pull up the four band. I'll select my snare I want to use. I do want to use this one with a slight cut to the bottom. Then I'll use another plug in here. I want to go to a compressor. I'll pull a compressor up, get a particular compressor I like from my drums, a snare comp, then I'll adjust this one. Put my pressure level down, make it a little more tighter. a little bit. And so we can add plugins and put them in order in our inserts. See that right there? So that's plugin A, B, and we have up to 10 inserts we can use in our Pro Tools environment.